Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I just arrived here in Shenzhen. This is the first time I've actually ever been in Shenzhen and I'm pretty excited because I'm down here to uh, do a tech tour. So GD Today, which is like a news company down here, invited me on this tour and we're gonna go around and see some of the uh, tech here in Shenzhen and kind of the greater Bay Area. Um, and I'm pretty excited about it because I've never been down here before. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what that tech looks like. I think we're going to do some autonomous car stuff uh, with uh, one of the big car companies here and I'm pretty excited about that. So let's jump right into this video and see uh, what this trip is all about. After landing in Shenzhen, I was taken on an adventure around Guangdong. I visited a lot of interesting tech companies and I even got to see some of the rural development projects that have been taking place in Guangdong. I realized there's a lot more to Guangdong than just Shenzhen. I think many people often think of Shenzhen when they think of Guangdong, but I was surprised when we visited many different and unique places. In this video, I will focus on the tech companies that I saw, and in the next video, I will talk a little bit about the rural development. My first stop was the Qinghai International Talent Port, which is a mouthful, but they basically help businesses attract foreign talent. The place is pretty new, but they are quickly becoming more popular because of the services they offer to local businesses and foreign talent. If you qualify for their services, then you can set up a business, apply for licenses, and hire staff. It was interesting to see how they are helping to build out the Qinghai area. After visiting the Talent Hub, I was taken to Insta360. If you aren't familiar with Insta360, I don't blame you, because they are still expanding. The company was founded in 2015, which makes them relatively new to the action camera scene. Like the name suggests, their main products are 360 degree cameras that can capture everything. You have probably seen 360 degree videos, and if you have seen one, it is probably captured using an Insta360 camera. They also have other tech products, but for now, they are mainly focused on cameras. The cameras were cool, but I don't think I'll be shooting in 360 anytime soon. So I moved on without filming much. The next company I visited was far more exciting to me, and I already posted a video about it. The company is BYD, which is an automaker here in China. They are one of the largest automakers and the largest EV manufacturer in China. Be sure to check out my video about China's EV industry and how BYD will soon take over the entire global EV industry. It was really interesting to visit BYD's headquarters because I didn't know much about the company. We just took their little uh, tour here in this big hall and um, actually learned a lot about the company. It's pretty interesting because they don't just make cars, they also make a lot of other things like uh, their own semiconductors, which I didn't know. And on top of that, they also make like a lot of molds for the cell phones. So a lot of the cell phones that people have, they actually have made molds. And that is really interesting because uh, I didn't even know that they had that type of business. So it's a pretty interesting company. And I was unaware of how much they were doing um, just in general. Because when we think of BYD, we just think of the cars. Uh, have a couple of their cars here on display and uh, a few over there on the other side. But uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to see their cars. They're pretty, uh, like these are their flagship ones back here and they're pretty impressive to be honest. They look like, like really nice cars. I mean, I remember when I first moved to China and BYD seemed like kind of cheap to be honest. Now they have pretty high quality cars. I thought I knew a lot about them, but after visiting and learning about all the products they produce, I was surprised. I was really pumped after the visit to BYD and the trip had just started. After visiting BYD, I also visited an AI company that is working on speech recognition software. They gave a little demonstration of the AI software, but it wasn't that interesting. To be honest, I think we will use more and more AI software like this in the future, especially here in China, but this type of tech isn't as flashy as electric cars or self-driving cars. My trip continued to the next stop, which was more interesting than I expected. I ended up at a TCM industrial park. Traditional Chinese medicine isn't something I'm particularly interested in, but two things stood out. First was this totally awesome miniature model of the entire park, and second was the use of science to make traditional Chinese medicine. I think many people have this image in their mind about TCM. The image usually involves an old Chinese man hunched over an apothecary desk with strange needles and herbs. But this traditional Chinese medicine science and technology industrial park, that is the full name, is actually a cooperation between Guangdong and Macau, and the goal is to help TCM companies expand into new markets. 
They also provide labs for different companies to carry out real science experiments, which I thought was really interesting, far more interesting than I expected going into the park. On the last day of the trip, I ended up doing two fast and furious things. The first was riding on the fastest subway line in Guangdong. The host that worked for GD today said it is the fastest subway line in China, but I'm not sure how accurate that is, but regardless, it was really fast. We're now in the Guangzhou Metro, and we're about to ride the fastest uh, train, fastest metro train in China, and uh, should be interesting. I think it said they goes like 180 kilometers an hour, which is pretty fast, and it takes uh, about an hour by car to get across this uh, area that we're going to go to, but this metro actually cuts that down to like a half hour, so people are pretty excited about it because it only takes a half hour now if you're going by the metro instead of the car, which is pretty cool. But we're going to go in here in a second and uh, see, see what it's all about. So we just got down onto the platform and as you can see it's completely empty and uh, we were told that we'd have like a private car because uh, obviously we're here with a bunch of people, a bunch of influencers doing this trip. Um, but yeah, it looks really new. This one was open recently and it's the, like I said earlier, it's the fastest line. So everything's new, everything's shiny, everything looks uh, really, really nice. As you guys probably know, China has a lot of subway stations. I believe they have the most uh, metro lines now in all of the world. I think they overtook Japan recently um, because they're really just building metro lines in really every city. And they're really cheap, which is actually uh, designed that way. And a lot of people say, oh, they don't make any money. The metro systems are not making any money. But the guide was explaining that they actually do that on purpose because they consider it a public service. So they're not trying to make it profitable. They're just trying to uh, provide the service to people. And they allow old people to ride for free. So if you're over 70, you don't have to pay for the Metro, which is again, a public service. And if uh, you're over the age of 60, it's only half price. And yeah, they don't make money, but they don't necessarily care about that which is an interesting concept because a lot of people say, oh, they're gonna go under, oh, they're, they're you know, terrible and, and that, oh, they're bankrupt. But it's like, no, it's how they budget it is that they understand that it's going to be operating at a loss. And that's just something that they've decided is worth it in order to move their people around. So we're about to take off, but it has that new uh, car smell, so to say. Everything's brand new. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, got nice it's quite quite large in terms of like if you look over here we have two seats and then on this side we have also two seats which is quite uh quite large and then you have like benches over there so you can have the like benches and you can obviously stand if it gets really crowded and many times these metros do get crowded and people stand especially during rush hour but um we're about to go here in a minute the doors will close and then we will Right for two stops, I was told, because we're just experiencing it. We're not really going anywhere. So we're moving, and uh, yeah, it feels fast. And uh, it's an express train, so it doesn't stop at every stop. It stops, you know, every three or four stops, so to say. Like I said, it could go up to about 160, according to uh, the guides. So I don't know if it actually gets that fast ever, but that's what they said the max speed is, which makes it the fastest in uh, China. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it was like already at 127, 128, something like that. Um, it doesn't stay up there for very long, so I keep looking to try and catch the speed because it, it gives other information, like which line, like which stop is coming up. So yeah, pretty fast. After riding the Metro, I got the chance to ride in a self-driving car. I'm about to ride in a driverless taxi, which is pretty interesting. I've actually done this once before in Beijing with Baidu, but we are now here in Guangzhou, and we're gonna ride in this taxi. It's called Pony.ai or Pony AI, and it's another company that does taxis. And this taxi service has just started about two months ago, they were saying. Uh, June or July is when it started and we're gonna get in and it's uh, autonomous, right? It's self-driving. They will have a guy in the passenger seat for safety, it's required by law, 
but we're going to get in and they're going to take us around. Uh, we're going to be on the actual roads, which will be interesting to see. So I'm going to hop in one of these cars because everybody's hopping in and I need to get in. <laughs> I need to get in uh, before I don't have a seat. Um, and yeah, we're going to see what this is like and actually have a road test uh, out here. There's traffic on the road. You can see cars going by, by like normal cars. Uh, so we're going to hop in. Here we go. Showing us, ooh, ooh, we're speeding it up. Showing us how fast we're going, going 40 kilometers right now. And it's identifying all these parked cars. We have a ton of parked cars on the side here. And they're all being identified on the map. You can see them all here being identified. And then out there, they're all out there. Yeah, stopping. Because everybody's stopping. He's not touching it. So we're driving, and uh, how long will this ride take? Um, Nobody knows. We're in the car forever. <laughs> the AI is in control. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go over to this building, to their office. Maybe five minutes, maybe a five minute ride. Um, no, so we are we are headed towards their office and I'm sure they're gonna take us in and show us more about the AI system, talk about their company. And uh, these are fully commercial. You can download the app and hail one of these just like a DD now. Uh, obviously, like I said, there's still a dri safety driver, but in the future that will go away and it'll become fully autonomous taxi service, um, which is pretty impressive because I mean, where else can you really do that right now in the world? Most places don't have this technology and most places aren't even commercialized yet. And this is one of like the first commercialized companies. Um, you know, there's there's some in the US that you can do and I'm sure there's some in Europe and other parts of the world, but China is really focused on this technology and they'll probably be the ones that have the most commercial uh, use of this technology first, just because of the amount of companies and in, in, uh, research that is going into this technology. The self-driving car was really interesting and like I said it was my first time riding in traffic. This whole trip was overall enjoyable and I got to learn a lot more about Guangdong and some of the Chinese tech companies that are operating in the area. But tech wasn't the only thing I saw in Guangdong. In the next video I will talk about some of the other things I saw in the rural development projects. I will link that video here so click here if you want to see that part of the trip. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps me grow and stay positive.